All right, so in this example, guys, obviously we can see some twos. But again, like going back to that division property, since we have these quantities separated by multiple, like we can't just divide out these twos. Okay, we have to write this in factored form. Therefore, the first step in our process is always just to factor, factor, factor. Um, so we can factor out, let's just factor out the two here. So we get an x squared minus one. Here I can't factor out a two, so therefore I at least know though that this is going to be factored into a binomial times a binomial, right? Even if I'm falling asleep, I know at least that all my quadratic trinomials can be factored down into a product of two binomials. And at least I know that the first term is going to give me a 2x squared, then I'm going to be dealing with an x and an x. And therefore, if they're going to multiply to give me 1, what are my options? 1 and 1 and negative 1 and negative 1, right? And since they have to add to give me a middle term of 3, this actually isn't a hard problem at all to factor. I only have one option. It has to be 1 because the positive one, because the middle terms are positive. Agreed? Then we look at this and we say, oh, well, that's going to be, that's a difference of two squares. We love those problems. Okay? And now we have every, all of our quantities are separated by multiplication. Now I can apply the division property, which again, that doesn't cancel out, but it goes to one. And now we're just going to be left with a 2 times x minus 1 all over 2x plus 1, where x cannot equal, if I set this equal to 0, that would be a negative 1 half. And then we'd also say that negative 1. x cannot equal negative 1. Right? Even though it got divided out, right? remember if the, from the function point, that just represent, means it represents as a whole. Agreed? Cool?